Hi guys, it's me Chazzer HD and welcome to this second podcast episode reviewing the 2024 British Grand Prix. Hope you guys are well and once again, apologies that I couldn't um, have done a watch along for the British Grand Prix race. Um, I was obviously going to, but um, I just wasn't well enough to do it. Um, I've been, as I said in the community post that I did, been having some uh, ear infection symptoms um, in the last few days and it just got worse after the qualifying stream and also didn't really get any sleep and for the streams that I do you know three four hours long uh, if you're going to do streams like that you've got to be in good physical condition you can't be going off of like no sleep and also not feeling well it's just not possible so yeah sorry about that that I wasn't able to go live uh, and missed out unfortunately on what was a brilliant British Grand Prix where we didn't know who was going to win really until um, what the final couple laps of the Grand Prix which is exactly how we want it and the weather of course played a a brilliant role in that so thank you to the great British weather for doing its job but yeah what a British Grand Prix not just race but weekend as well um, surprising qualifying result Mercedes locking out the front row something we did not see coming um and then the race yeah was just a, it was a classic race it was it was a race that you're gonna look back on in 10 years and still enjoy it was uh yeah a brilliant grand prix but let's just go through um not lap by lap what happened but go by some of the teams and how their race unfolded and uh, i'll try and make some points that i want to get across um during this episode so we'll start of course with the race winner not just mercedes benz for the second race in a row second week in a row lewis hamilton for the first time in two and a half years wins a grand prix in formula one for the first time in three years wins at silverstone takes his ninth win at silverstone and you may have heard me in the last two or three weeks saying that i didn't think lewis hamilton would be able to win another Grand Prix. Thankfully, he proved me wrong, and I was hoping he would prove me wrong because uh, we've missed Lewis Hamilton being at his absolute best, and that's what he was at in the British Grand Prix yesterday. Um, yeah, brilliant performance by him, but it was not easy at all. So at the start, Mercedes obviously had the front row lockout, led the race away, um, the start was pretty comfortable for them. It was a lot less hectic than I was expecting for uh, the two Mercedes drivers. Then Russell obviously maintained the lead and built up a, what was it, one and a half second lead. And things were looking comfortable. And then the rain came down. Not a lot of rain, but enough to make things uh, interesting and to get some positions moving around. And because, I think, not just because of Lewis Hamilton's quality in those dry slash wet you know intermediate conditions but also because as martin brundle on skyform commentary revealed mercedes did have a, a bit more downforce on lewis's car that's what allowed hamilton to close the gap to russell once that rain started to come down and then with a very nice overtake up into stoke corner got into the lead but that lead did not last long only a couple laps i think it was when Lando Norris then came blasting past into turn one, seemingly on a different racetrack Lando was on compared to the Mercedes cars. The McLaren was so quick in those conditions. And thankfully for Lewis, even though Oscar Piastri then passed him, and it was then a McLaren 1-2, as we were approaching what um, near the halfway point of the Grand Prix, Hamilton still kept himself within, you know, touch with the two McLarens. He didn't let, you know, the two McLarens get way out in front to the point where McLaren could get comfortable, which is uh, was crucial at that point of the Grand Prix. Then, of course, when it really started to rain enough for the drivers to have to put on intermediate tyres, McLaren made a mistake not stacking their cars, which left Oscar Piastri uh, out to dry. Um, and um, and then obviously Piastri ended up dropping down, I think, what was it, to sixth place because he just pitted a lap too late for those intermediate tyres. That allowed Lewis Hamilton to get back up to second. And then 
Towards the end of the stint they did on the Inters, Hamilton started to close in on Norris, keep the gap close enough that if Mercedes wanted to go a lap earlier in, you know, going on to dry tyres, that Mercedes could possibly get back into the lead. And that's exactly what happened. They pitted a lap earlier than Lando Norris, went onto the soft compound tyre. Lando pitted a lap later, slow pit stop, and also went onto the wrong compound, which we'll get into in a moment. And then Lewis Hamilton was in the lead by, what, 2.2 seconds? And then Lando started to drop back into the clutches of Max Verstappen, who then overtook Norris. And Verstappen eventually ran out of laps to pass Lewis Hamilton. And the key for Lewis Hamilton's victory, a brilliant victory, but the key, again, was that he... I think if you look at all the drivers that were contending for victory, you know, Hamilton, Russell... Of course, Russell, we'll get into in a moment, he uh, ended up DNFing because of a water uh, system uh, issue with the Mercedes car. But out of, say, all the drivers that finished the race, Lewis was the most consistent out of the, the four that finished the race that were contending to win the race. Hamilton, Verstappen, Norris, Piastri. Max, of course, in the first half of the race was really off the pace and was quite far behind at one point, I think, before they went on to intermediate tyres. Uh, Lando Norris, of course, you know, he, at the start, was a bit off the lead um, and wasn't really showing a ton of great speed. I mean, it was he had decent speed in that first stint before the rain started to come, but it wasn't amazing. And then, of course, in that final stint of the race on the soft compound tyre, which I believe Lando... Um, decided to go on to himself, he just didn't have the pace in that final stint to be able to go and fight Lewis Hamilton for the win. And then for Piastri, uh, really for Piastri, it wasn't really his fault, but that, you know, lap where he had to stay out on track on dry tyres on a clearly wet track is what cost him being able to win the British Grand Prix. And that's ultimately, again, what allowed Lewis Hamilton to win was because he was uh, the most consistent through the race and wasn't really, um, you know, there wasn't a part of the race where Lewis, you know, uh, lost a ton of lap time and, you know, dropped through the field for whatever reason. He always kept it in the top three. And eventually, when they triggered that final pit stop, that allowed Hamilton to be close enough to the race leader at the time, Norris, to get into the lead and just about hang on and win by, I think, was it two, two and a half seconds from Max Verstappen. Yeah, brilliant performance from Lewis Hamilton. Um, A great victory. I do feel sorry for his teammate, George Russell, who, until that rain came, was really performing well and was comfortably ahead of Lewis Hamilton by a second and a half. But still, I don't think what we're seeing this season is the best Lewis Hamilton. But we are definitely, now that the Mercedes car has improved, we're seeing a much better Lewis Hamilton than we saw in the first five, six races of the year, which is great to see. And of course, the next Grand Prix on the calendar is the Hungarian Grand Prix, where Hamilton also has had many pole positions and race wins. So who knows, maybe he can grab another... A race win in a couple weeks' time. But yeah, for George Russell, I have to shout him out because I do think he was unlucky. Um, you know, again, was in a very good position in the dry at the start. When the rain started to come down, then really started to struggle. I don't know if maybe with the setup of his car, if he maybe didn't have enough wing on for um, those conditions, which may have caused him to struggle as much as he did because he went from first down to fourth in like two laps which was quite incredible, Um, and then found himself, before he retired, he was in fourth place behind Max Verstappen, only a couple seconds behind, but was, at that point, quite far off the lead. Um, And even if he had not retired from the race, he would have ended up probably finishing in fourth place, maybe third at best, but probably in fourth. So yeah, shame for Russell, because he's had a great weekend, and I feel like Lewis Hamilton winning is going to take away some of um, the shine from also, I think, a great weekend for Russell. Because remember, in qualifying, George Russell was incredible and was clearly the best driver on Saturday. So let's remember that. Um, And 
yeah, Mercedes, second win in a row. The last time they won two races in a row was Qatar and Saudi Arabia 2021, which was towards the end of 2021, so two and a half years ago. Um, and yeah, Mercedes are now a, a factor in Formula 1 again, proper factor in Formula 1. And we now have, for now, until maybe Red Bull bang on a, an upgrade that really moves them you know, seriously forward or McLaren. We've got three teams legitimately at the moment who can win races. And at the next Grand Prix in Hungary, I'm expecting it to be very close between McLaren, Mercedes and Red Bull and all of those drivers. Except, of course, Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. But yeah, great to see for Mercedes. Another race win and getting a lot closer in the Constructors' Championship to the teams ahead of them. Um, let's go on, though, to Red Bull and Verstappen, who, of course, finished remarkably in second, even though they never looked likely to finish in second until the final, what, few laps of the Grand Prix. And I am very baffled by the race Red Bull and Verstappen had. Now, with Sergio Perez, we'll quickly just touch on him. So Red Bull, of course, they you know, messed up his race. I mean, Perez messed up his weekend, really, with what happened in qualifying. Um, you know, spinning out at Cops Corner and ending up at the back of the grid, ended up starting from the pit lane. Red Bull ended up pitting him too early for Inters, and then by the time the rain properly came, that was, you know, um, that meant you had to go on to Inters, he had to put on a new set because the Inters he already had on were dead. Um, so Perez, uh, after that, was uh, pretty much out of the running of things. Um, but for Max Verstappen, he had a good start, Good um, a move around the outside of Lando Norris at turn four. Had a decent run at Lewis Hamilton. And then after that, he just had no pace until really the final, what was it, 12 laps on those hard tyres. But until then, he never really featured in the race. In that first stint, until the rain came, he pro uh, progressively got slower and then the two McLarens pretty easily overtook him. And one thing I'm, again, baffled by is why Max did not defend at all against the two McLarens. The only thing I can think of is that he knew he was struggling for grip and he was just trying to manage his tyres and wasn't really bothered with if anyone overtook him. But this is Max Verstappen. Normally, Max, when someone tries to overtake him, he's very aggressive in defending, but didn't bother defending at all. Um, and then, yeah, the two McLarens passed him. At one point, he was only barely head of Carlos Sainz, and he was, I think he was over 10 seconds off the lead at one point. Things did improve when he went on to the Inters, got a bit closer to the race leader, and then again, when they went on to the dry tyres at the end, it got better, and Red Bull suddenly started showing the pace we were expecting in the race itself. But I don't get why Red Bull, for those first 40 laps, were just nowhere. And I don't get why suddenly in the final 12 laps on hard tyres, which were better, you know, those tyres uh, than the tyres Lewis Hamilton and Lando Norris were on the soft compound tyres. The hard compound tyres for Verstappen was clearly a better race tyre, which was no surprise. But I don't get why suddenly they were as quick as we would have expected. But then in the first 40 laps, when they were on the same tyres as everyone else, they had pretty much no pace and they were like clearly the third best team and were slipping into the clutches even of Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari I just I don't get it again I've seen comments from Max after the race saying that they were really struggling for grip but to the point where you're just letting your rivals overtake you again I'm just I'm baffled by that um I mean, maybe, you know, if Max had defended against Lando and Oscar a bit more, maybe in the end that would have allowed Max to be closer to Hamilton um, uh, towards the end. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, I, I was just... When I saw that, I just was baffled as to why Max was not even bothering to defend because we never see that with him unless, you know, he clearly has an issue with his car. Um... So yeah, Red Bull and Verstappen, I think you got to say really great result for them considering how bad the race was for them in terms of the performance of the car. Um, they still pull away in the championship <laughs> remarkably uh, with the Drivers' Championship from Lando Norris and now Max is, what, 84 points clear 
I think, are 85 points clear of Lando Norris. Um, and in the Constructors' Championship, still in the lead Red Bull, but McLaren have gained points on them, and so have Mercedes-Benz. So they cannot uh, be uh, thinking that it's all comfortable on the Constructors' end, because it absolutely is not. But again, remarkably still, Max pulls away in the Drivers' Championship, despite having a very mediocre race weekend not in terms of his own performance but mostly from the team they have got to improve red bull because i was you know a bit worried from what i saw of their performance compared to what we normally have seen this season even with the teams closing up on them we've still seen good pace from them in the you know recent races but what we saw at silverstone was yeah quite alarming i must say but let's go on to a team who looked likely, a lot of the time, to win the British Grand Prix, and that was McLaren, the home team. Um, the start of the race wasn't very good for them. They ended up losing position with Lando Norris to Max Verstappen, ended up dropping down to fourth and fifth. The pace in the first stint, though, it was decent, but it just wasn't good enough, really, to have them up there fighting with the Mercedes cars. And it wasn't until that rain started to hit when McLaren really started to come into things. And as we saw back in Canada, in those conditions where it's dry slash wet, McLaren clearly have a really good car in those conditions. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's um, a suspension setup or just the way their car performs aerodynamically, but it's really strong in those types of conditions. And Lando... Once it started to rain and, you know, rain, not hard enough for it to be, you know, intermediate conditions, but make it um, a bit greasy on track. Lando magically went from third to first in the space of, what was it, a lap or two. Um, a brilliant move uh, on the inside of Lewis Hamilton into turn one. And then was in the lead uh, pretty comfortably, I have to say. Even once they moved on to intermediate tyres, Lando was pretty comfortable ahead of Lewis Hamilton um, but then right before they moved on to <clears throat> dry tyres Lewis Hamilton started to close the gap to Lando and then obviously Mercedes pitted a lap before to trigger that undercut. Now Lando could have maintained the lead if they had had a better pit stop. They had a four and a half second stop that cost them what um ultimately track position because if Lando had had a two and a half or two second pit stop I think Lando just about would have come out in the lead but another thing that cost McLaren was the decision by I believe Lando Norris to finish the race on the soft compound tyre and not the medium compound tyre and this has led me to um, to want to make a point here when it comes to what happened towards the end there. Now, I understand with the teams, like, you know, if it starts to rain and you put the decision as to, you know, when to move on to inters um, from dry tyres, putting that decision in the hands of your drivers is the right thing to do. But if it has stopped raining and it you know, it, everyone's about to go on to dry tyres and you know you're about to go on to dry tyres for sure. Surely the team need to take a bit more authority in that situation and say, Lando, you may want to go on to soft tyres, but we really think mediums are a lot better to finish the race and you may actually be able to win the race if you go on to mediums. But instead, they gave that decision fully to Lando as to what compound to go on, which I think, in hindsight, they should have said, Lando, we think mediums are better, we're going to box for mediums instead. Because we saw with his teammate Piastri back and forth, Oscar was doing fastest laps of the race um, a lot of the time. So, in hindsight, I think McLaren should have just boxed him for mediums instead. Because if they did... Lando may have won the British Grand Prix yesterday and ultimately that is one of the reasons why McLaren did not win. Also again the pit stop um, being slow was an issue as well where obviously Lando went a bit too deep into his pit box but if they had gone onto the mediums even with the slow pit stop I think 
there's a decent chance Lando Norris would have won the British Grand Prix because that soft tyre was good probably for the first two or three laps after they went from inters to dries. But after that, clearly was not the best race tyre to be on. And the reason Lewis Hamilton won, really, was because Max, who was the nearest car to him on a good race tyre, was too far away to be able to catch Lewis before the end of the race. If Lando was on the hard or the medium, then Lando probably wins. So, yeah, I think in hindsight, they should have um, taken that decision, the team, into their own hands and said, you know, we're going to go on to dry tyres, but we're going to go on to mediums because we think that's a much better tyre to finish on and gives us a much better chance to win this race. But they didn't, and... That cost them, and they ended up finishing third with Lando Norris. Oscar Piastri, got to shout him out, because he was performing really well in the race. Right before they all pitted for Inters, he was right on the back of his teammate in the fight for the race win. And then McLaren, mistakenly, decided to keep Oscar out and not double stack. Now, yeah, Oscar would have lost a bit of time having to wait for his teammate to pit, but he would have lost less uh, time stacking up in the pits than what he did which was go around another time and he ended up losing like 15 seconds or something uh going around another time so yeah that was a big mistake for McLaren it's such a shame because again Piastri was right in the running there and if you know if Piastri had maybe only lost three or four seconds as opposed to 15 seconds Piastri maybe could have ended up on the podium Instead of Lando Norris, given that he finished the race on a much better compound and was quicker, quite a bit quicker, than his teammate Lando Norris, um, you know, towards the end of that Grand Prix. But ultimately, for McLaren, even though Lando Norris has come out after the race and said he doesn't believe McLaren have had the best car at any weekend so far this season, which I think is probably incorrect. I don't think McLaren have been as quick as maybe some other people have claimed this year, but... I think there's probably been a couple races where they've definitely had the chance to uh, get more success than, you know, they've had. Um, if we look at the British Grand Prix, McLaren have got to look at it as a chance missed. Uh, in qualifying, pole position was there for them. And Lando did a horrible final lap, which he has to look at himself in the mirror for because that final lap was simply not good enough. If he did a proper final good attempt... Probably would have got him at least onto the front row, maybe even on pole. And then, you know, if he had started that race on pole, could have been a much different race for Lando. Maybe despite going on to uh, the wrong tyres to finish, maybe, maybe you've still ended up winning the Grand Prix. Um, but then in the race, yeah, um, with that final pit stop, again, too slow and the wrong tyre choice. So if you're a McLaren fan... Whilst, yeah, there was some great moments for McLaren during the race, you cannot tell me that McLaren did the best they could to win the British Grand Prix because they definitely did not. They absolutely could have won the British Grand Prix. Qualifying missed the chance there to get pole, which would have made things a lot easier. But then in the race, when they still had a very good chance, they once again did not get things right. So, yeah, McLaren need to try and correct this going into the next Grand Prix in Hungary, where you would imagine they're going to have a very quick car like they had last year. Uh, because if we look at the last, you know, this triple header we've just finished, McLaren have had their opportunities to, you know, to win. In Spain, they were on pole. Lando didn't get a great start, ended up sacrificing position to Max on the first uh, corner, which really cost him. And then didn't pass Russell in the first stint, which ultimately cost him the win. Or the chance to at least fight for it. Austria, even though, yeah, Max made contact with Lando. Max got a penalty and all of that. Lando did have chances before that to pass Max fairly and win the race. And also, let's not forget the sprint race where Lando passed Max and then let Max have the inside line and ended up uh, costing himself not even just first, but second place in that sprint. McLaren, they've got a very good car, but they're not getting the results they should be in the races. They're just not executing the races well enough. And that really is the difference between 
I would say, in terms of the operational side from, you know, Red Bull and Verstappen, and then you look at Mercedes with their drivers compared to McLaren and Norris, is Mercedes and Red Bull with their drivers tend to most of the time get things right during a race because of their, I think, just more so experience, but also quality. McLaren, whilst they've got a very quick car, two very quick drivers, they just don't seem to get it right enough in the race and get the um, the big decisions right and make the big decision, uh, big uh, not make the big decisions go their way, but the big moments during a race, they don't force it their way enough, if that makes uh, any sense. And that's really what is costing them winning a Grand Prix right now. Of course, they won in Miami, but you could argue they should have had two or three race wins since then. Uh, definitely yesterday, uh, maybe Austria, maybe Canada, you could say, maybe even Imola, you could say as well. So McLaren have got to get better and Lando Norris as well have got to get better at executing on um, a Saturday to a degree, but mostly on the Sunday. They need to get better at executing the big moments correctly because if this continues, they're going to get a lot less uh, points and race wins this year than really they deserved to get. But yeah, McLaren, third and fourth, a result that was, I think, quite disappointing considering what they probably should have ended up with this weekend given Max Verstappen and Red Bull were clearly on the back foot. So yeah, uh, an opportunity missed there for McLaren and Lando Norris. Uh, for Ferrari, just want to go on to them. Carlos Sainz ended up finishing in fifth. Carlos did the best he could. The Ferrari car is just not good enough. Um, it was in race conditions, clearly the fourth best car, but was nowhere near as good as the top three over the course of the race. Um, for Charles Leclerc, he was having an okay race in, what was it, um, was it 7th place, I think it was, um, before the rain started to come down. And then Ferrari, way too early, I don't know if it was him or um, the team, decided to come into the pits for intermediate tyres and it uh, that gamble completely fell on its face. And Leclerc burned out his intermediate tyres almost immediately. And then when the rain really came down, like Sergio Perez, they had to pit again for another set of inters because the tyres were already gone. And then that completely destroyed Leclerc's race and there was no chance he was coming back from, um, I think he finished in like 15th or 16th place, something like that. In the end, did Leclerc. Um, they did a similar thing in Canada, did Ferrari, where they put Leclerc on slicks when it was clearly raining. It just... I know what they were trying to do. They're, you know, they're trying to go the opposite way to what everyone else was doing, hoping that things would turn out in their way. But, you know, when Leclerc was running in eighth place and wasn't, you know, he wasn't miles away from his teammate. I mean, he was 10 seconds away, but he wasn't, you know, half a minute or something away. I don't think it was really necessary, especially that early in the race. It was like, what, lap 16, 17, something like that. Again, it just wasn't necessary, I don't believe, for them to do that, and for them to take that risk. But that's what they decided to do, and that's what they ended up with. Again, Carlos Sainz did the best he could finishing in fifth, but Ferrari still in massive trouble. Um, they had to go back uh, to the Imola spec, during the weekend did Ferrari because of obviously um, the upgrades they've put on in the last few weeks just have not improved the car and the drivers clearly struggling for confidence with the car and we saw in qualifying they were slower than the Haas team genuinely slower than the Haas team and shout out by the way to Haas and Nico Hülkenberg their massive upgrade that they brought clearly has worked and they are now I think you'd have to say for the moment the, uh, the best midfield team which is great to see. We haven't seen that from them in, uh, well, since, what, 2018? Pace like that. Uh, not just in qualifying, but also in the race. Holkenberg ended up with another 
Sixth place finish. Haas only a few points now behind Racing Bulls. Um, so yeah, great for them. But for Ferrari, they really need to find a solution quick. Because the next Grand Prix in Hungary, I think they're going to be at even... Um, or in, uh, at, um, They're going to be in an even worse state, if I can speak English. Because that track, even more so, will expose their issues that they've got right now. Especially compared to the top three teams, who are clearly in another universe compared to them right now so yeah ferrari big issues for them as i discussed uh last week again shout out for haas great result and another great performance by nico holkenberg who just like last year is one of the top performing midfield drivers which is great to see and i think holkenberg might now be in the top 10 of the drivers championship i haven't checked i will obviously throw up on the screen what the championship standings are towards the end of this episode but uh, i haven't actually checked uh whether holkenberg is in the top 10 or not but yeah shout out to the haas team and also shout out to all the drivers who ended up finishing obviously pierre gasly ashamed that he had his gearbox issue but one thing that was remarkable in that race and i don't know if you guys noticed this but despite all of the on and off rain and the chaos it was yeah that that race was we did not have one yellow flag at all during that race. Never mind a virtual safety car or a safety car. How incredible is that? You would have expected in those conditions, especially if you watched the F2 or F3 races at Silverstone, for there to be at least a virtual safety car at some point during the event. But there wasn't even a yellow flag, to my memory, during that race so yeah that is <laughs> quite incredible uh that we had that and that just shows the quality of the drivers that you know in those difficult conditions they ended up doing as well as they did uh, but yeah what a grand prix we had at silverstone but one final thing to just go on to looking back to a week ago in austria is and i think don't know if this did actually come out on the day of the British Grand Prix, but it came out during the weekend of the British Grand Prix. The FIA came out and admitted that they should have given Max Verstappen a warning in, you know, the incident, or not the incident, but in the build-up to what eventually happened between Max Verstappen and Lando Norris. A warning, I'm guessing, um, in regards to Max moving under braking. I mean, first off, not quite sure about the timing of them publicising that, unless it's something that just leaked from the driver briefing, which, you know, may have happened. But looking back at that incident, would anything have been different if Max had been given a warning about moving under braking? I'm not sure it would have, because, again, the contact that happened, I mean, yeah, it was technically Max moving under braking, but Max wasn't moving under braking that much. It wasn't like a clear... He went from the very far right to the very far left or anything like that. So it's all great saying it now by the FIA. But it didn't make... You know, at the end of the day, they didn't give him a warning. And I, looking back, I don't think it would have made a difference, really. Um, especially to Max Verstappen, who isn't exactly someone who is going to listen to the FIA about um, you know what the driving standards should be. Max is just going to do what he's going to do, as we know, uh, and whether people like it or not. Um, so yeah, just I thought that was very strange to hear that, but that's what they come out and said. Maybe they believe that would have changed things, but personally, I don't think it would have made a difference to what happened back in Austria. But enough of what happened in Austria. Great race at Silverstone. Shame, again, I missed out on it and wasn't able to stream for it. But um, I will be back for the Hungarian Grand Prix. And one thing I can announce is that I will definitely be live for qualifying in Hungary, which is, what, 12 days from now? So, uh, yeah, cannot wait to get into that. Should be a very exciting qualifying session with three teams going for pole position and five drivers going for pole position in Hungary. And also, there might be a bit extra content um, just before the Hungarian Grand Prix weekend as well, which I'll let you guys know about once we actually get to, say, the day or two before 
um, the actual weekend of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Uh, so yeah, I'll let you guys know about that soon enough. But um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, for listening, for uh, my review here of the British Grand Prix. Again, shame I wasn't able to stream for it. It would have been a, an amazing stream covering this uh, British Grand Prix. But we'll have to wait until another Grand Prix uh, to try and uh, you know live out um, you know a great experience on stream. Uh, which I'm sure will happen soon, because with how competitive things are currently in Formula 1, it looks like we're heading for more races like what we had at Silverstone more often, uh, especially if rain is involved. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening along. And until my next piece of content, which I'll announce pretty soon, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye. <laughs>